Hello, friends. Well, it's been very windy today, but Robert and I are continuing on our quest of um, cleansing in the new year. So we have been um, working in the shed and storing all the um, decorations from the holidays, also going to storage and moving things back and forth. So very busy, but as I work in these various areas, I'm coming across a lot of memories. And so um, I wanted to share one with you today. My grandfather was an immigrant from Hungary in the very early 1900s. And he came over on a boat with probably, you know, $2 in his pocket with his brothers. And um, they, they, I don't know if they, I don't know how they actually got to South Dakota, but they ended up in South Dakota because there were um, jobs there in meat packing plants. So he began uh, as a meat packer in uh, the Midwest. And then um, I'm not sure, I'm really not sure much about what happened between then and the time that he married my grandmother, who is also an immigrant from Russia. But they met and they married and they owned a little home in Aberdeen, South Dakota. My grandfather and grandmother were the parents from South Dakota, were the parents of my mother. So we used to visit every summer and go to South Dakota. And I was the apple of my grandparents' eye because I was the only child in the family. My mother had one sister who had no children. My father had one brother who had no children. So I had no cousins and I was the only grandchild. You can imagine how spoiled I was. <laughs> Anyways, I loved my grandfather very much and um, he and I were great pals. I used to wander around the garden with him and help him pick the cucumbers and help him pick the tomatoes. And I remember um, harvesting the dill with him and watching the irises grow. And so after my grand father and my grandmother got married, Stephen Mary Palank. Um, you know, my grandfather continued to work. I'm not exactly sure what his occupation was at the time, but he was a hunter. Everyone was a hunter in South Dakota. They would go pheasant hunting and other kinds of hunting. But my grandfather was very unlucky. One time uh, he was hit in the knee by a fellow hunter and so he always had very serious knee problems. He had a, a big depression in his knee from a bullet. And he also got hit in the um, arm and it caused damage to a nerve. And so it paralyzed his arm. So my grandfather really had only one working hand all of the time that I knew him. And he would drive a car with one hand and was completely handy, just completely handy. He could fix anything and do anything all with one hand in the time that I knew him. Anyways, so that combined with the fact that he adored me, um, he used to make me all kinds of things. And this is one of the things that he made me. Hi, kitty. <laughs> he made me this beautiful little children's rocking chair. And I've saved it all these years. It used to be in the basement in South Dakota. And I used to love to visit because there was always be this special uh, rocking chair there for me. And then we, we brought it to California. And um, my parents put it in my bedroom when I was a little girl. And they would laugh and laugh because I would, when I would get uh, upset or get angry, I would sit in the chair and I would just rock, really rock. And it made a lot of noise. <laughs> a lot of noise in a rock so they would know when I got my dander up that I was in the chair rocking away <laughs> so I have very fond memories of this dear little chair and I'm hoping to now refurbish it and give it to my grandchildren so that's my grandpa I loved him madly and as I said you know he and my grandmother spoiled me whenever I went to, to South Dakota but um, as I became a young woman you know, things happen and my grandmother died. They were married a very long time, you know, probably 60 years. And it was very uh, tragic for my grandpa and he had a hard time. 
after my grandmother died, Robert and I eventually decided to get married. But the year before we were married in 1980, my father died very suddenly from a heart attack. And so my father died in January of 1980 and Robert asked me to marry him in December of 1980. We thought it would be appropriate to wait a year. And um, then in August of 81, we got married. But that meant that I didn't have a dad to walk me down the aisle. So my dear little grandpa, who probably had been on a plane maybe once in his life before, I think they might have come for my high school graduation, um, came out to California to give me away. And I have these beautiful pictures of him. I'll, I'll do a better pic, I'll do a still so you can see it. But you can see that his little arm is sort of in a stiff position. And then this is my grandpa and my mom and me as they walked me down the aisle. Look at my dear mom, love her so much. And my grandpa. So my grandpa stood in for my dad and there couldn't have been anybody better because I loved him so much. And I have this beautiful little rocking chair to remember him by when I was little and now that I'm grown. These lovely memories, lovely memories that I'm gonna pass on to my children.